All right, students, listen up. I'm Professor Frio. A refrigerant used to help keep buildings, cars, and refrigerators at optimal temperatures. Soon you'll be joining me on a cooling adventure. But first, let's start with today's lesson. A long time ago, Before modern refrigerants and refrigeration systems existed, people had to find their own ways to beat the heat. Over many years, advances in technology were made and we were created to help remove heat or BTUs from one location and transfer it somewhere else in order to keep people cool. There are several different kinds of us because we are used for different applications. However, usually any liquid with a low temperature boiling point that can absorb heat at low temperatures and change from liquid to gas and back to liquid can become a refrigerant. There are two things you need to keep in mind before we head out on our adventure today. Lesson number one. Heat will always move from a high energy concentration to a low energy concentration. Lesson number two. Liquids absorb heat when they are changed from a liquid to a gas, and gases give off heat when changed from a gas to a liquid. Remember, the whole purpose of the refrigeration cycle is for the refrigerant, that's us, to absorb heat from a space and move it to another location, such as outside of a building, over and over again. This keeps spaces at the optimal temperature for their intended purpose. Our role is to be the medium that carries heat through the refrigeration system by going through the refrigeration cycle. There are four components to this cycle. The evaporator, compressor, condenser and metering device. Once we finish, we start all over again. Are you ready to join me on our voyage through the refrigeration cycle? Yay! All right, the first leg of our adventure starts in the evaporator. Who can tell me what the evaporator is for? Hmm? The evaporator is responsible for changing us from a liquid to a gas by absorbing ambient heat. Evaporators can be found either in the airstream itself, such as a DX coil in an air handling unit, or for larger buildings such as hospitals and universities, they can be found in something called a chiller. That's where we are now. When we entered the evaporator, we came in as a low temperature, low pressure liquid. We are cooler than the chilled water flowing around us, which allows us to absorb all these BTUs or heat from it. Whoa. Professor Frio, what's happening to us? The evaporator is doing its job. The heat we are absorbing is causing us to begin to boil and change state to a vapor. Is everyone ready? It's important that we are all vapor before moving into the compressor because liquid can damage it. Let's move on. Our temperature has been raised in the evaporator, but we're still a low pressure vapor. The compressor's job is to increase the pressure in order to raise our temperature even more. Remember lesson number one. Heat will always jump from a high energy concentration to a low energy concentration. Our goal is to be warmer than the environment around us so that the BTUs want to move to a different location. Get me out of here! Hang in there, just a few steps left. We're off to the condenser. Professor Frio, this looks a lot like the evaporator. You're right, it does. It performs a similar function, except this time the goal is to remove the heat instead of to absorb it. The condenser is usually located in the place where we want the excess heat to go, whether this is outside of a building or on the outside of a refrigerator. As we move through the coil, the environment will absorb the heat back from us because it's cooler than we are. One more stop to go. We're liquid again, but we can't go back to the evaporator until we're low pressure. This is where the metering device comes in. In addition to changing the pressure, 
The metering device or expansion valve is also responsible for determining how much refrigerant is needed back in the evaporator. What do you mean? We're not all going back together? Remember how I said we can't get any liquid in the compressor? Well, if there's not enough heat in the evaporator to change us all to vapor again, then we'll have ourselves a problem, won't we? The metering device makes sure the right amount of refrigerant goes back into the evaporator and keeps everything running smoothly. Isn't that cool? And just think, while we're busy keeping this building cool, your refrigerant friends are out doing the same thing in other places, like cars, homes and refrigerators. The refrigeration cycle happens all over. Aren't you glad to be a part of it? You know, Professor Frio, that was actually pretty fun. Can we do it again? Don't worry, you'll re-enter the evaporator when you're needed, and the cycle will start all over again.